Now we're gonna move on to the celebration of learning, and this we're just gonna have some different people from different classes come up and perform and show you what they've got and what they learned over this year. So we're gonna start off with the percussion ensemble class playing Journey to the Rock Club. Two households, 
Fuck like it is me. Yeah, I'm from the world that I've seen. From ancient grudge, breaks to new mutiny. When civil blood makes civil hands unclean. But blood fed loin from these two clothes. A pair of star crossed lovers take their life. Who does the dungeon of hideous poetos do with their death? Bury their hair, shine. Call me butt love and I shall be new baptized. Call you butt love? <laughs> <laughs> no, call me butt 
Rose Day. Okay, we spent way too much time on Romeo and Juliet, but it is a classic. Unlike our next play, which Shakespeare wrote as a 24 year old starving artist, just before a hit with two quarter door where next meter was coming from. No surprise that Flute dominates his first romantic tragedy, Titus and Trotkiss, which we now present as a cooking show. Hi everyone, I'm Titus and Dronicus, and welcome to the Glory Gourmet. You know, when you had a lousy day, your left hand chopped off, your son's murdered, your daughter's hands cut off, your tongue cut out, great. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is cook. Unless, of course, you cook the rapist and serve him to his mother at a dinner party. My daughter Lavinia and I will show you how. Good evening, Lavinia. Good evening, Eddie. And now we're going to
So what they did was they took that, measured a few blood splatters, and then took the string with a protractor and actually brought it down to the wall, uh, to the end of the floor from the wall. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah. So originally, I was just going to have them go for it, and then I thought I'd make it harder, so I gave them an hour to catch the murderer. Um, it was super fun, I think, right? You did it. Here, how, how was it? It was fun. It was the most amazing time. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, first time experience right there. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, so, this was, I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty difficult. The, um, getting everything and actually collaborating, uh, with the students and the teachers, getting them in the classroom, getting the space. But this is the old administration building that I got to do this in, which was super cool. Thank you, Mr. Lachlan, for letting me do that. Um, yeah, you guys are awesome. Right? Um, I think this just goes to show that if you have a passion for something that you want to do and you need a space, you know, welcome, got your back. Okay. Next slide, please. Next one, too. So, yeah. These students, you know, there's only like six, which is pretty cool. They figured it out with almost no help from me. Uh, I came back as the ghost of Javon, you know, because I was the one who was murdered. I came back from the CSI, you know, pulled hair out of my head. This was found here. They really took initiative. Um, I made the guy, Logan, had it up on his phone the whole entire time. Looking at what I had made in the study guide and actually putting what I had them into good use in this uh, experiment. Next slide, please. Yeah, so a lot of people, I don't know if you would want to do honors, like, ugh, this is class, you know, why would I work outside class? This has actually really helped me for my future. I want to be a plus five analysis. I don't know if anyone knew that, I don't know if you care. But this has helped me take the time that I had at Wasatch to really make a difference to some students' lives. I know you haven't ever done anything like this before. Neither have you, clients. I know that they thought it was fun, and I know that I've learned a lot in teaching just a class in general and leading a group, which is very important for future skills. Next slide, please. Yeah, so as I said, this is hard. I had originally planned to get pig blood, which I did not. Don't worry, no pigs were hurt in this project. Uh, I used water for coloring and powdered sugar. Um, and I had eight, or sorry, I had three different crimes that were committed, all varying in severity. And I picked the least severe one for these little kids because. My mind is well active, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Something about beating a sponge with a baseball bat just, you know, just gets the blood boiling. Next slide, please. Yeah. So some of the problems I overcame, really, I just had to take initiative and actually speak out and get the time, set the time aside to do this project. And I just had to, the, one of the, okay, I'm going to say this for, for whoever does Weekend Rec. Yo, if you sign up for something, you better go. That's annoying. I'm just going to say it for all of you. If you sign up, you better commit to that, all right? I got you, Ms. Davis. Next slide, please. <laughs> all right. So I said I collaborated with a lot of teachers. The old administration building, I learned this, you know, when I was trying to do another orange project. Two people have, can open it. Three, sorry. OK, you got Mr. Chepetta. You got. Mr. Lofton and uh, Dr. Friedman. Those are the only few people that could open the building. Those were my surprise, Ms. Uh, Mondragon you couldn't, so I couldn't get in there. So I had to go ask them to open the building every time I needed to go in there to work on it. Along with that, I had to get the emails from all the students who actually came, <coughs> and I had to set up for this amount of students, which, you know, wasn't that big of a deal, but it was still collaboration. Next slide, please. All right. So some of, the, some of the leadership things I've already went over, I just want to say, like, I think this is such an amazing program. Um, you can literally do this for any class you want. You love dance, Airbnb. You could have done it for dance, right? Oh, you love horseback riding. 
You can do it for horseback riding. Art, all right, rope climbing, mountain biking. You can literally do this for anything. And if you win, you can go eat out for free. For free. Give me the top three. I do not see what the downside of this program is, honestly. And it looks good at college transcripts, all right? Next slide, please. So, along with that, it's easy to come up and say something after I've already done it. Yes, this isn't the easiest thing to do in the world, but if you do find something you are passionate about, it makes it a whole lot easier. Just keep that in mind for the next question. Next slide, please. Yeah, I decided there's three kind of scenes, um, three different ideas. Does anyone want to know about it? I know. All right. <laughs> All right, so what I did was, I took, Logan, can you stand up, please? I took how tall he was and his left handedness. Can you raise your left hand? So I took that without actually him being there, and I choked up on my baseball bat with my left hand, and I choked myself. <laughs> yeah. So I'll do it on this wall right here. Yeah. So this is kind of gruesome. I was letting you guys know. Never seen it. Yeah. No. Sorry, guys, over there. So originally, Logan, you know, he's kind of mad. You know, I was mad off in his mom's class. You know, like normal. So he got fed up. Took a baseball bat, beat me right here against the wall. All right. I know, head trauma, I fell down, he grabs my hand and hits my head against the wall. That's where they got the hair from the crime scene. Um, after that, you know, I fall down because after getting hit in the head a few times, I don't think anyone would stand up. I fell down, you can't really see it right there, but there's a hand there like this, falling down. And that's where Logan just, you know, left me there. He's like, ah, he's pretty dead. You know, <laughs> then he remembered, oh, he called my hair done. He came back with a hammer and then that's where he saw my hand being around the floor. So I had to keep Logan in mind as long as well as my height while I was doing this whole thing. So it was difficult, but you know, it's fun. I got to beat I got to beat things with baseball bat. I don't know if you guys did that that day, but it was very stressful to beat it. Next slide please. Alright, so I know I remember my skill of honors, but like I said, I didn't do it last year. I was slacking. Um, I did it for English, and I, this one I did actually in a group. So I, we took a group of students, I don't know if you guys remember the Jewish Holocaust thing. The people who were here a while ago, yeah. Yeah, so you don't even have to do this by yourself. You can split up the work in a group, and you know, you can really go for it. Next slide, please. Yeah. As I've benefited, you know, I'm going to be blessed by analysis or A. I already know what I'm doing. So, being able to do this in school, get credit for college, look good on college apps, be able to eat at Melanus twice, you know, I've benefited a lot from this, I must say. Thank you, Dr. Green. So, the first thing that I did was 
was actually finding a piece of rough cut oak. And in my journey, I felt like that was me. Starting off my first year of high school, clueless, not really knowing who I am, and starting off with Aikido. The next thing that I did, so my first tool was a router. And I used that to give my bowtie its shape, to give it a bevel. And it wasn't just a piece of wood anymore. It wasn't just a stick. It was becoming something much more. I felt like that was learning my first few techniques in Aikido. Okay. After that, I used a palm sander. And that was to sand it down, to shape it a little bit more, to polish it a little bit more, but it was still rough. And in my journey, that was me practicing my technique. After that, I used some fine grit sandpaper to polish it and refine it, and that was polishing and refining my technique. Next slide. A little known fact about me is that I don't know how to read or write Japanese at all. And so I would like to thank Mr. Duncan and Jiho for helping me translate this, and I would also like to thank Kazuhiro for helping me inscribe it onto my blade. And in my journey, I felt like this was the month where I couldn't practice Aikido because I was busy working in the play. Next slide. Adapting. My original plan was to burn in my book. But if anyone has ever used one of these tools, they're not fun. They're really blocky, and they would have not given this quote any justice at all. Next slide. Initiative. For all of those who have taken an honest project, you should know you can't leave these to the last minute. And I know this because it took me the whole semester from finding a piece of good lumber to finding my globe to getting to my final project to finishing my presentation. Next slide. The finishing touch. The finishing touch was to lacquer and polish my blade. And in my journey, that was learning my techniques by heart and going into my fifth Q exam and acing it. Next slide. Curiosity and imagination. I could have bought one of these at the mall for like $10. And I could have just thrown this flow into Google Translate and ended up with something that meant taco salad. <laughs> But I wanted something personal to go along with my personal journey. And what is more personal than making something with your own hands? Next slide. The next step, this is easy. I want to get as many belts as I can to one day use my boat to its fullest potential and to one day pass on my knowledge to other students. Next slide. Benefiting from Los Hatch Academy. What else can I say? This place is amazing. And I would really like to thank Dr. Rackford for being <laughs> such an amazing teacher and an amazing sensei, and for changing my life immensely. And next slide. Thank you for joining me on my journey to find my interviews. All right, so this is just going to be a quick video of our favorite Ethan Barga showing us how to throw a bowl in ceramics. <laughs> so wait, can you pause this thing for a second? Okay. So I, I was asked to uh, put together a quick little video on how to throw a big ceramic bowl. So early in the year, Mr. Pernod challenged me to throw a, a huge bowl. Um, I like to throw really small things, so between one and two pounds. And she challenged me to throw something quite a bit bigger, so I decided I'll start off with five pounds. And so if you can start, so if you can start the video, please. So in the process of ceramics, you're supposed to get the clay and form it into a circle, <coughs> and then center it on the wheel. And centering on the wheel is exactly what I'm doing right there. Um, it's pre um, putting pressure on the clay, 
I'm trying to make sure it's not um, wobbly, so pretty smooth on the top and the bottom. And so you can see I'm putting a lot of pressure on the, the side. Um, you don't want it too wide because it will um, make the bolt too wide. So um, you can see, I'll get my finger here in a minute and I'm going to um, see how wobbly the side is. And, okay. <laughs> and then after I decided um, it was pretty good, um, I start to press down in the middle. And that's to start to form the basic shape of the bolt. Um, it's, you probably want to go, I, I went pretty deep, thick on the foot, which the foot's the target on the bottom. Um, I left about two inches, but you, were, you, you want about one inch. And so once I got to the depth I wanted, I started pulling up, and that's squeezing the and pulling up. And so, let's see, um, I'll grab it from the bottom, because that's where the most, the most part of the, most of the clay is. You can see, I keep dipping my hands in the water, because um, when you throw, the clay dries out really quickly. And if you do that, Bowls dry and your hands are dry, it's going to knock off the energy and fall apart. And that sucks. So, I keep pulling and pulling. Um, and what you can't tell from this time lapse is the wheel going really slow. So, when you first center the bolt, you, I, I get the wheel pretty, going pretty quickly. But um, after it's centered, you want to slow it down because. As soon as you start pulling up, that's just starting to come out. Um, it's going too quick, the bowl will start to widen and it'll just like turn into a blade and not be good. So um, after that you can see um, I'm reinforcing the rim, which is when I get my fingers and go over the top of the rim. That's just to reinforce and make it strong, make sure so it's level. And then I'm trimming right there. That's just extra clay that I don't need. We'll get in the way. And then, just finishing up, I'm checking the sides. Because you, um, you want to make sure all the sides are equal. You don't want to have to take side. Um, or it'll be pretty heavy and ugly. Right there, that's called a wood rib. And that helps um, shape the bolt and make sure it's um, Long and smooth. So I get so I use the wood rib there, and then I grab this yellow rib, and that helps really do the finishing. We'll see here in a second that the bowl really changes shape. Drops again. I'm reinforcing again to just to make sure it's it's a long process. Um, this video is only four and a half minutes, but it took me 22 minutes to throw. So, yeah, there you go. It's going to be changed. Um, after um, I'm checking, I'm making sure the rim is the right side and smooth. And I get a finishing project. I wanted to leave a little ring in the bowl, so I grabbed that and I kind of just left a little design and then I grabbed a sponge and I finished it. So, um, you know that, of all of you who don't play ceramics, ceramics is great. It's one of my favorite classes and it's really helped me um, just find joy and it's really a great program. So, uh, thank you.
So this is um, a collaboration uh, project between two classes. Uh, one is Computer Science 2, and the other is uh, uh, 3D Design, uh, 3D game Design. So um, uh, Lee is a designer, and uh, I program the game. So um, this is how it goes. So me and the paper are in the video game design class. We design the game, and we work on um, so what I use for programming is the language called C Sharp. Um, we did that in Unity where um, they gave me all the game objects that uh, they designed and then I programmed it to uh, work and um, finally we were able to finish this game. So uh, one of the things that um, like uh, we faced problem in this is like we were never in the same class and we never had like the same time together to work on it. So we had to uh, almost like be every single week during night time uh, after dinner to uh, work on it like collaboratively. So this is probably if you get the impression in us, like I don't get really much to talk this. Okay, so um, uh, this is our game, and we call it the journey because uh, that's what like we went through. We did not know anything about how to make a game or design anything or program anything, but we started from scratch, and now we were um, able to make a really small game, and um, we learned a lot from this, and this is our journey to um, like uh, growth in our life, and that's why we named it that way. So uh, if I show you the game, um, so this is like a simple game that we play. You, we can like have, uh, so we have like a different levels so you can play and um, I would encourage like anyone here who would like to uh, come and play. Oh, all right. Yes! yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll explain how to play. Okay, so last time we did it on Tech Night though, and um, Michael also tried, but he failed though. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this time it's just, uh, uh, he's playing it again. So what, you, what we have to do is, there's a time limit, and uh, this is, um, you have to collect some certain stuff, and then you have to cross the bridge. And uh, if the time runs out, then the game is over, and you lose. So, um, Michael, you can start. Super hard.
gotta go left.
Next slide. That's another one. Next slide. And this one I actually painted with nail polish, which I did in my room. Not a smart idea. I don't recommend communicating your room. <laughs> um, even with the windows open. So, next slide. And this one back here is painting um, some of the books. on top. Next slide. Um, so, why is this project above and beyond? Why am I the only one in the English screen presenting this? Well, um, most people decided to do like PowerPoints, a video, or a drawing. I think the most common ones in my class, which do take a lot of time and effort, but I actually worked over 10 hours on this piece, and I used a lot of my free time. I was using my time odds, using all of my academic coaching periods, and a good deal of time in my dorm. So, yeah, next slide. Um, a problem I encountered is, <laughs> it's actually pretty hard to find a book, even with the help of YouTube. So when the glue was drying inside my book, I squished the spine and kind of worked, as you can see. But that's okay, because this book is supposed to represent me, and I'm not perfect, so it might be okay. Next slide. What's next for me with this project? Um, I really like book arts, and if you don't know what that is, I highly recommend you look it up. It's like really creative art um, with books, and book binding is part of that. So I uh, hope to continue that, because I am a fairly crafty person. And then I also hope to one day have an actual book of my poetry published, <laughs> coming to Barnes & Noble near you in a few years, hopefully. So yeah, next slide. And now I'm actually going to read the poem. This is based around. There was a time when life was hopeless. Would I look out car windows and tell myself sweet lies? Would I say I was happy but really just have forgotten how to cry? When I yell with all my anger and just wants to die? There was a time when life was hopeless. There was a time when life had no meaning. When someone would call out my name and I'd assume it couldn't be me. And when I have a reason to say my name. When if I had any emotions, I would forget what they could be. When I saw no reason for friends, for feeling any sort of grief. There was a time when life had no meaning. There was a time when life was the obstacle. When all I wanted was to be alone. When I had no morals, no truth, no place to go. When the numb was as bitter as freezing snow. There was a time when life was the obstacle. There was a time when life was quiet. When the thoughts in my head were louder than years of words. When a broke in a hill could make my soul burn. When anger and rage were all I was worth. There was a time when life was quiet. There was a time when life was numb. When even blazing blood brought me no true feeling. When a pound of food would do me no healing. When I cried myself dry and forgot all life's meaning. When living was death and a grave more feeling. There was a time when life was numb. There was a time when life had stopped. When every inch of skin was paper to rip. When the songs of loved ones didn't help a bit. When people would walk by and do nothing of this. There was a time when life had stopped. There was a time when life was slow, when I'd cry and want nothing more than home, when chicken coops were all I thought I'd know, when dirt and trees replaced the hell below, when genuine tears for the first time would flow. There was a time when life was slow. And there was a time when I found strength, when I knew I could do it, no matter the length. When I kept on pushing despite the pain. When some days I'd want to flee with the rain. When a single flower could make my day. There was a time when I found strength. And there was a time when I was hope. When I was a steep, tall tree who knew life's path. When no monster or human could stab my back. When all the outcomes excluded life's wrath. When 
the present would always overcome the past. There was a time when I was hope. And there will be a time when I feel it all again. When all the hell will rush to the surface. When I'll conquer the world and not want to be perfect. When the tears will keep coming, but it will be worth it. When I'll remember who I am and no longer feel nervous. There will be a time when I feel it all again. But next time, I'll be all right. Thanks, Nikki. So, last but not least, I'd like to introduce the vocal ensemble group to come and see. Okay, before we perform this song, I just want to say this student body never ceases to amaze me. I mean, these were some amazing uh, demonstrations today, and that's just a tip of the iceberg of all the things that are going on. So Risk-taking, right? Pushing yourselves. Nobody was an expert when they started, right? It's something that they had an idea and they pushed themselves. And we can all do that. We all aspire to do that. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter what the endeavor is. When you look at this group of um, young men and women behind me, I mean, you recognize it from the basketball court and from equine and from track and field and from soccer and all these other wonderful things that they do. They didn't come into vocal ensemble and say, oh, I'm a really good singer, I'm just going to do it. We just don't sit in the, any of these classes and just, you know everything already, right? You push yourself. And so keep pushing yourself. There's so many wonderful opportunities at this school. You know, if you've never been in a play and you want to be in a play, do it. Right? If you, if you want to do honors in your physics class, do it. Push yourself. Right? Take those risks. It's really, it really will make a difference, as everyone said um, in their presentations. Uh, this piece we're going to share with you this morning, uh, Ubi Cavitas, uh, is a Latin piece, and uh, loosely translated, it's where there is charity and there is love, we'll have hope and God will be with all. <coughs>
Generation of Learning. I've been to a lot at a lot of different schools, and this is such a very special place. And thank you again to each and every one of you who um, stood up and, and shared from your heart your learning. This was really wonderful.